Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door, and I'm outside my door today out in this snowstorm. And actually, we have a winter storm warning today. Today's episode is going to be about how trees and shrubs survive winter temperatures and winter storms and how they have these strategies for survival. In particular, I want to feature rhododendron that are native to these mountains and have an amazing response to a winter storm warning. We hear a winter storm warning and we take preparations. We get some extra water out. We go to the grocery store. We get toilet paper, bread, and milk. Well, what do the plants do? Well, the plant didn't feel the winter storm warning, but what it's so sensitive to is these cold temperatures. And so today's episode is the fascinating way rhododendron survive a winter storm. Stay tuned. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're going to find. If you've watched any of my winter episodes, you know that I'm fascinated by how animals survive and overwinter from warm-blooded animals to cold-blooded animals and insects to fascinating evolutionary strategies to overwintering. Well, I was looking at these plants today and I was thinking, this is going to be a great episode. What are some of the ways that plants overwinter? Well, some annual plants overwinter as seeds. The rest of the plant dies back, they produce the seeds, and the seeds sprout in the spring to reproduce the life cycle. Then there's deciduous trees that produce abundant leaves in the summer with maximum surface area for photosynthesis and growth and storing sugars. And then in the fall, they drop all those leaves. Why do they do that? Keeping leaves through the winter would put the trees at risk of desiccation and drying out with all that surface area exposed to wind and cold and drying when groundwater might be frozen and none of that water could be replaced from the roots. The other problem would be that these leaves would weigh them down when it snows and shatter the structure of these deciduous trees that are designed to spread leaves out and get maximum sunlight during the year. Pines, spruces, and firs have a different strategy. They're evergreens. They stay green year-round but their needles they produce are, have less surface area than deciduous leaves. And the trade-off here is, while they don't have as much surface area for photosynthesis, they can do photosynthesis for much longer period through the year. In fact, they can do photosynthesis any time during the year that temperatures warm up and soil thaws. And then when it gets cold, they can shut down again. But as soon as there's a week of warm weather, those trees can do photosynthesis again. Furthermore, they have pyramidal shapes. As you can see in this Fraser fir, these spruce trees, this pyramid shape allows that snow to fall away on both sides and it sheds the snow, allowing them at the same time to grow tall, produce a lot of needles, but not risk damage as a deciduous tree would in a winter storm. So then there's other plants, like these rhododendron, that are native to the Appalachian Mountains and have a strategy that straddles in between deciduous trees and pine trees and fir trees and spruces. They have narrower leaves than deciduous trees, and these leaves are much thicker and leathery and have a waxy outer layer to prevent them from desiccating when groundwater in their soil is frozen and they can't retrieve water to replace evaporation from their leaves. So they can, like pines, spruces, and firs, do photosynthesis whenever temperatures warm up and water is available thawed out from the, the soil. So they'll maximize their exposure to the sun in the summer, like these ones here, by spreading their leaves. But in the winter, to avoid desiccation, and water loss and being crushed by snow, these leaves will start to roll up and droop. And I've watched them over the weeks when we had a very warm spell in the end of December, beginning of January, 
these leaves are open and spread out. This week, as it got colder and colder, I watched these leaves roll up. So what I observed and verified with a little research was that above 40, the leaves are open and they're out, ready to catch sun rays. Between 40 and 34 degrees, the leaves start to droop, but they don't really start curling yet. And then at 33 to maybe 25 degrees, the leaves are drooping all the way down, practically vertical. They begin to curl, and at below 25 degrees, the leaves really curl up tight. What an amazing response, a dynamic response to cold temperatures by this plant. These plants aren't static. They're dynamic. They're responding to the environment. And look how vertical these are. There's no snow piling up on these leaves at all. So by rolling up and dropping to a vertical position instead of a horizontal spread for sunlight, they can shed the snow, retain their water, and avoid desiccation and loss of water during these winter temperatures. Nature has so many fascinating strategies, and I so enjoy sharing them with you on this channel. Well, I hope you enjoyed this live snowy episode of Nature Hunt Your Door on site here outside my door in the Appalachian Mountains. If you like my channel, please subscribe and leave me a comment. I love hearing from my viewers. I cover so many different topics about nature and the outdoors. I hope you'll check out my other offerings in addition to this video. Thanks for watching Nature at Your Door.